So what are the key issues in, in managing people with diabetes and CKD? One is to be ensure that, the, that um, their diagnosis is correct. Um, just because someone has diabetes and kidney disease doesn't mean their kidney disease is from diabetes, and that's particularly true in populations with high rates of diabetes. Um, you know, if 50% of your patient population has diabetes, that means 50% of the people with lupus will also have diabetes. So you need to do a, there's a screening evaluation, which I'll talk about briefly. It's important to monitor progression with EGFR and urine albumin. It's important to uh, in, implement the appropriate in, interventions to slow progression. I'm going to talk about that. Screen for, com for complications, educate the patient, and then help prepare them for kidney failure and its treatment. I'm not going to talk about staging. We don't use staging um, in the educational materials that we produce for a number of reasons, but mostly because by itself EGFR is probably too narrow a basis on which to talk about diagnosis and prognosis. I can answer questions about that um, if you'd like later, but I think eventually we'll uh, probably evolve to a multi-factor prediction score that includes EGFR, UACR, age, diabetes, um, status, blood pressure control, maybe some other biomarkers. Um, so what can we do to slow progression of chronic kidney disease? I'm going to talk briefly about hypertension, diabetes, reducing urine albumin, and addressing uh, cardiovascular risk factors. The complications and the risk for cardiovascular disease increase as kidney function declines. The fewer, fewer functioning nephrons means blood pressure is harder to control because it's harder for the kidney to get rid of salt and water. Um, you may see more frequent uh, low blood sugars for people with diabetes because uh, insulin is metabolized by the kidney. The, in, the kidney uh, produces erythropoietin and anemia may appear. Um, and there are fairly complex uh, derangements of vitamin D result and, uh, um, and parathyroid hormone, which result in significant morbidity. How we treat that is still up in the air since it's mostly based on observational data. And then there's uremia. Um, where waste products build up in the blood, um, including, um, uh, and some of that includes uh, acid-base disturbance where the kidney actually has trouble excreting acid, uh, phosphorus increases, as well as potassium, it may. Now, the first issue we want to address is blood pressure, and, and in general, uh, blood pressure is not well treated in people with kidney disease, and the, the worse the kidney function, the, the higher the blood pressure, and um, actually, Indian Health Service uh, does a better job than most settings um, with, uh, I think, close to 75% of people uh, with blood pressures less than 140 over 90. Um, blood pressure goals have traditionally been, uh, or at least for the last 10 years since JNC7, 130 over 80. This was really not based on very good evidence. Uh, the consensus now is that the evidence really supports 140 over 90. Um, regardless, uh, the major issue is people with really uncontrolled high blood pressure. Um, lifestyle modifications work, um, and you're familiar with these. I just wanted to reiterate them. You can look at this later. Um, the DASH diet. Um, probably one of the best public health interventions that's, that's gotten out there. Uh, that works. It lowers blood pressure um, and uh, is very effective. Um, it uh, is not widely used or tested in people with CKD because it uh, may be a little bit higher in protein and potassium and phosphorus. But if you have a patient who is, uh, has resistant hypertension and you can't, and, and this is a diet that works for them, I, you know, it's probably best to go with what works than what's perfect. Um, again, diabetes is the leading cause of kidney disease in the United States. Um, and the natural history, as I outlined earlier, you know, shows uh, damage beginning early, well before it becomes clinically apparent. You know, it doesn't become clinically apparent till out, um, I'm using the wrong, till out here. And um, 
what we know is that glycemic control, tight glycemic control, makes a difference early, probably before the development of kidney disease. Um, and that's been validated. The control of new, even newly diagnosed type 2 diabetes may lower the risk of albuminuria. It's not clear if it really changes the progression over time. Um, a lot of the studies of tight control were done in Scandinavia 30 years ago, and they showed an effect um, be, uh, that a slowing or re, a regression of kidney disease um, prior to the development of clinically apparent kidney disease. So um, the problem is, is that that's, we're talking about the difference between very good control and very tight control. And for many uh, of our patients, uh, we're not talking about the difference between a G, uh, A1C of 7.5 versus 6.5. We're talking about A1C of 9.5 versus 7.5. And that's a study that won't be done because it's simply not ethical to have a control group with uh, blood sugars that are really, really out of control. And the other issue why glucose control is important, even if it doesn't slow the progression of kidney disease once kidney disease is established, is that most people with kidneys show up in clinic with eyes, legs, uh, hearts, and, di and diabetes control for those complications clearly is beneficial. Um, the goal for um, patients with kidney disease needs to be individualized because there's not a huge advantage in slowing the progression of kidney disease that's established. Very, very tight control is not necessarily beneficial, and particularly in older people who have uh, limited life expectancy and multiple other complications the, uh, and, and at more risk of hypoglycemia, the risks may exceed the benefit. Um, in terms of losing weight, uh, many of our patients are interested in, in uh, high-protein diets, and um, these are generally not recommended for diabetic kidney disease or any other kind of kidney disease because excessive protein intake is also associated with hyperfiltration and theoretically at least uh, is likely to adversely affect the kidneys. Uh, in addition, there's a much uh, higher burden of, of waste that need to be excreted by the kidney. Um, and simply by itself, high protein intake is associated with increased urine albumin excretion. So, um, and the fact that these uh, high protein diets after, in the long term, aren't any more effective than, uh, than just changing to a more appropriate diet, we tend to discourage patients from eating high protein um, diets. Um, the recommendation for people with diabetes and kidney disease um, really is not as complicated as, as it might seem. Uh, we don't have very good evidence that very low-protein diets are, make a difference. We know that excessive protein intake is, at, is not beneficial to anybody. So if we aim for the RDA of 0.8 grams a protein per kilo per day, uh, we will, uh, you know, provide the maximum benefit to the most people, and um, which is fortunate because trying to go below that really results in a diet that people have a very hard time living with. So, uh, and also this is a level of protein that the whole family, even the people without kidney disease, uh, can live with and is appropriate for them. There have been a lot of questions over the in the past about um, protein intake. And it, getting below 0.8 is, is very, very difficult and may not be um, beneficial. And the, uh, and the main issue is getting people to, to not eat excessive uh, amounts of protein. The one thing about diabetes and kidney disease is that um, uh, because insulin is metabolized in the kidney, uh, there may be an increased frequency of hypoglycemia as CKD is progressing, even if it looks like the, the EGFR is stable. So if you're seeing a patient and they suddenly say, gee, you know, they say, I'm having more hypoglycemia, you know, um, that might be nice for them because they can be on less insulin and less medication, but it, it may not be good because it's a, a reflection of decreased kidney function.